Hey everyone, this is Cody coming to you from my dark sky site, and today I'll be reviewing the Apertura Carbon Star 200 Imaging Newtonian. I'd like to thank High Point Scientific for lending me this telescope the last three months. I was so excited about this telescope, I actually emailed them and asked them if I could review this. And the reason this telescope intrigued me so much is typically Newtonians right out of the box need a lot of upgrading. The spider veins might be a little bit flimsy and collimation can be hard, or sometimes the tube is not stiff enough and it can't hold the focuser and you get a little bit of sag. And oftentimes the focuser is not up to par. Maybe it's a Crayford or a Rack and Pinion that just doesn't have enough tension to hold big heavy setups. Well, this Carbon Star 200 is advertised as being fully upgraded out of the box and that was super intriguing to me. I think it looks great, has great specs. So I was like, hey, I, I really want to review this telescope. So I'm really grateful for them for allowing me to do so. High Point Scientific also asked that I provide my affiliate link for this telescope. So the goal of this video is not to sell you on this telescope whatsoever. You know, I'm honest in all my reviews. So I will give you all the pros of this scope as well as a couple things that I think could be improved. But if you feel like using my uh, affiliate link to support the channel, feel free to do so and that's the only time I'm going to mention it today. So I'll put that in the description and you can use that if you'd like to. But besides that, let's go ahead and get started with the review. One thing that I like Apertura did is they include a Los Mandy style mounting plate as well as a Vixen style mounting plate. So for me personally, I like the added stability I get on a Los Mandy plate, but if you want to save a little bit of weight, you could just take the Vixen plate and mount it with that and not use the Los Mandy plate. Now, one thing I will say, I would prefer if this was more of a carry handle than just a Vixen plate because I have I have long skinny fingers and I can't really get my fingers under it to carry the telescope. So it's one thing Explore Scientific does that I like is they have a, a nice carry handle with a quarter inch slot so you can still mount things to it. So I think that would be a great touch from Aperture as well to make this more of a carry handle. But that's just my opinion. I still think it's great that they include both sets of mounting plates for you to choose from. Apertura also sells an optional carbon fiber dew shield. And just like the telescope, it's really quality made. Another neat thing about this dew shield is it comes with some secondary mirror collimation knobs. So it makes collimation of the secondary mirror toolless, which is always nice. However, those knobs do stick out a little bit, so you won't be able to use the normal, you know, dust cap right over the top with them. So they're intended to be used with the dew shield. And then the dust cap goes right into that. The nice thing about fast Newtonians is how short they are. It's nice and compact at 26.5 inches long. If this was an F5 Newtonian, it would be longer and heavier. So it's nice and compact, very portable for getting to a dark sky site like this one. Additionally, with this nice matte black carbon fiber material here, we are weighing in at 16 pounds fully assembled. Now, of course, that doesn't include my camera or anything I'm sticking on here, but you have the Los Mandy rail, a Vixen rail, everything on here 16 16 pound tube i don't even need a counterweight so build quality is excellent and pretty much all the parts that are red anodized that you see here are cnc machined as well as the focuser and the spider veins which we'll talk about next one of my favorite parts on the carbon star 200 are the cnc machined spider veins look how thick these are makes collimation much easier than a traditional newtonian where these are really thin because when they're thin, they flex and bend, and it makes aligning the primary and secondary really difficult. But with these thick spider veins, collimation becomes much easier, and you also still get those beautiful diffraction spikes. The telescope does have 13 knife edge baffles included in the tube. Just another upgrade there. A lot of people have to flock their Newtonians, but this one already has baffles in there, so you won't really have to worry about stray light. The other nice thing about the baffles is they partially cover the mirror clips. Not all the way though, so maybe we will see uh, primary mirror mass come out from Apertura in the future, but I haven't really noticed any issues with the mirror clips in my images, and I think the baffles do help with that. I'm going to pause the video real quick here. This is Editor Cody now, and as I was going through this video after filming, I saw that Apertura did actually release a primary mirror mask for the Carbon Star 200. It looks like it is out now, so that's pretty awesome and a wish fulfilled. So if you're worried about the primary mirror clips affecting your images, I'll go ahead and post the link to this in the description below. So yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, let's go ahead and resume the video. 
A lot of Newtonians have a back plate, but it's in the rear cell. This one is unique in that you can remove it, so if you want to let the telescope acclimate to the temperature outside, you can do that, and then you can snap the rear plate back on to avoid, you know, any stray light from getting into the back of the tube. So that's kind of a, a cool feature. One thing I'm not a huge fan of is that the collimation screws stick out past the rear cell. It might seem like a petty little thing, but for me, it actually is a big deal because every night I take the telescope off the mount, I go to stand it up vertically, and I don't want to stand it on these screws for a couple reasons. Number one, they're not the same length, so the telescope would just be sitting on these three collimation lock screws and it will just tip over and fall over. And for someone that stores most of their Newtonians vertically, I keep forgetting about this and I keep going to do it and then I, oh yeah, I can't do that. So I would love it if the rear cell was just extended a little bit, just on the edges, that way you could sit the telescope vertically. Again, it doesn't seem like a big thing, but for me, I was surprised how often I ran into that problem. Oh, I have to store it horizontally on the ground and that camera's hanging off of it. It's just not a great way to store it. So that, that was one thing that kind of bothered me, but the collimation process itself is excellent. You have the lock knobs and the actual adjustment knobs and they're very sensitive, they work well. So overall, the telescope is very easy to collimate, but I just wish this was extended out, this rear cell was extended just a little bit. Now, that would add a little bit of cost, but to me, I think it'd be worth it so you could store the telescope vertically. The primary mirror is made of borosilicate glass with 96% enhanced aluminum coatings with a silicon dioxide overcoat for protection. Now, just like typical Newtonians, it is a parabolic mirror. So it's going to have quite a bit of coma, especially at the fast F4. The more aggressive that mirror, the more coma we're gonna see. So I would highly recommend the Apertura 1X coma corrector. Even with my APS-C size sensor, you get nice round stars out to the edge and you get rid of pretty much all of the coma there. So for me, a good coma corrector almost isn't an option on a standard F4 Newtonian. It's pretty much a requirement in my opinion. The coma corrector is threaded M48 by 0.75 millimeter male, giving it compatibility with many accessories like filter wheels or drawers, camera rotators, and it also allows for direct attachment to deep sky cameras as well as DSLRs and mirrorless cameras with the proper T-ring. It also requires 55 millimeters of back focus, which is the industry standard, making it easy to get the correct spacing. Without a doubt, my favorite part of the Carbon Star 200 is the focuser. And that's saying something because I love carbon fiber. <laughs> but this focuser is extremely strong. It's CNC machined, rack and pinion, nice and solid, and you're not going to get any focuser sag. It's what every Newtonian manufacturer should aspire to, in my opinion. Right out of the box, most Newtonians require a focuser upgrade not the Carbon Star 200. This focuser is rock solid. You can put a filter wheel on here, a big heavy camera like this ASI 2600 MC Air, but our off-axis guider, and it's going to hold it for you. That to me is absolutely huge to save money not having to buy a new focuser. It's also 10 to one speed, it's buttery smooth. And another thing that is awesome about this focuser is it is drilled and tapped for electronic focuser brackets. So having the option to put on your ZWO EAF or another kind of electronic focuser is amazing. Just another thing you don't have to upgrade and you get a nice sharp focus. The other thing is the secondary mirror is 74 millimeters. This telescope is designed to optimize an APS-C size sensor across 28 millimeters and it definitely will do that. My ASI 2600 MC Air produces great images and the telescope handles the uh, the weight of all this just fine. So honestly, I was highly impressed with this focuser and I think it's probably one of the best parts of the telescope. One interesting thing about the visual back is I can actually unscrew this silver ring and this will expose some threads and these threads are M56 by 0.75 millimeters. They are not M54 by 0.75 millimeters. They might look like they are, but they're not M54 threads. And you'll actually find this same thread pattern on the focuser draw tube. And you can see that I can actually take this silver ring and thread it right on there. So both the visual back and the focuser draw tube both have M56 by 0.75 millimeter threads. 
As with most people that image with a Newtonian, usually I have the tube rotated so that the focuser is pointed down. But for this example here, I have it pointed off to the side and there is no sag whatsoever with the focuser. Just a nice stiff carbon fiber tube, solid focuser, it's really impressive. Let's talk about the astrophotography performance of the Carbon Star 200. Now for me personally, the 8-inch Newtonian is one of my favorite size telescopes to image the night sky with. I have a Mead 8-inch Schmidt Newtonian, that's f4. I have an Explore Scientific Comet Hunter, that's a 6-inch telescope. It's about 800 millimeter focal length as well. And I just love this size of telescope because I feel like galaxies, star clusters, nebulae, even like binary stars, they all frame so nicely with an 800 millimeter focal length. Now that 200 millimeter or 8 inch primary mirror still gets you really good light gathering power. And then of course you divide 800 by 200 and you get f4. So they're also pretty fast and gather the light quickly. Now this telescope has been optimized for imaging. If that hasn't been apparent in this video, well, I hope it should be, but you get an incredible focuser. The spider veins are going to give you awesome diffraction spikes. And that's really what makes star clusters stand out. I think they look good in other telescopes but the diffraction spikes on stars are really quite beautiful, honestly. And then of course, the tube is baffled. It's carbon fiber, so you shouldn't get too much focus shift throughout the night. And uh, honestly, the performance is excellent with the Aperture Coma Corrector. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the data I've acquired with the Carbon Star 200. I'm currently imaging the Helix Nebula from my dark sky location, and this is fun for me because this is a target I can't shoot from my own house. I have to drive quite a bit south to image this, but if I zoom in here, you can see the stars are nice and round after five minutes, and if we look at the corners, they look really good, so that coma corrector is doing its job. Even with this APS-C size sensor, you're not really seeing any coma all the way out to the edges really impressive performance here and uh, yeah I'm excited to process this image I probably won't get that much data before I run into the horizon but any data I can get on the helix nebula is a positive unfortunately the full moon did just pop up over the horizon so I have that to contend with but hey I mean you can see it looks pretty good so far you can see that central white dwarf right there so yeah excellent performance from the Carbon Star 200, as well as the Coma Corrector. I think it's important for me to show you the raw data from the telescope, especially with an APS-C size sensor, because as we all know, you can pretty much process any telescope image these days and make it look good, especially with Blur Exterminator. So here is a raw look at a five minute exposure of M33, uh, the Triangulum Galaxy, with the Apertura 1X Coma Corrector. So if I zoom in, to the edges here, you can see we don't see any coma at all, which is really nice. So actually, you know what, instead of showing one at a time, let's go to um, image analysis, aberration inspector, and let's quadruple this. Would that be 256, 5 to 1024? There we go. So let's minimize that. Yeah, you can see over on the edges, nice round stars. Zoom in a little bit here, nice round stars. So no detectable coma with an APS-C size sensor. That's actually pretty impressive. So the coma corrector works really well, especially at F4. Now, of course, this wouldn't make much sense for me to show you this unless I showed you what the coma looks like. So I also took an image without the coma corrector at F4 with the Carbon Star 200. So let me pull this up. Uh, let me stretch that. There we go. And uh, yeah, you can see the coma right there. That is really bad, <laughs> but that's to be expected. That's just optics. So let's go ahead and go to script again. Image analysis, aberration inspector, make this 1024. There we go. Minimize this one and bring this over. And you can see just how bad the coma is. That looks pretty comet shaped to me. Go over to the other corner there. Pretty coma sh or comet shaped. And uh, yeah, as you get further away from the center of the sensor, 
the worse it gets. So the coma corrector, I'll be honest, I'm pretty impressed with it. With APS-C, I still thought I'd see like a, a little bit of it at the edges, but you don't. These stars are nice and round. Now, of course, I, I do want to show the, the final image here. I could have processed this a little bit more, but I like to process things pretty subtly. Uh, most of my images take me around 30 minutes to process max. So yeah, there's the, the final image there. And I think this is a beautiful galaxy. You get the diffraction spikes there from the Carbon Star 200, really pretty diffraction spikes. And uh, as mentioned, those corners look really nice. So with that said, let's go ahead and check out all my processed images that I took with the Carbon Star 200. Well, that wraps up my review of the Apertura Carbon Star 200 Imaging Newtonian. As I mentioned throughout the video, this thing is just packed with features from the really strong CNC machine focuser to the excellent CNC machine spider vanes. The overall quality of the telescope with the carbon fiber tube is just great. It's baffled and it's optimized for an APS-C size sensor. It's just an awesome imaging Newtonian straight out of the box. Again, I'd like to thank High Point Scientific for allowing me to use this telescope for the last few months. And I have some amazing Bortle 1 skies today. It's gonna be nice and dark tonight, so I can't wait to image with the Carbon Star 200. So that said, as always, I appreciate you watching. I hope you have a great day and clear skies.